Trifling Ones fam, I don't believe in coincidences. And I'm going to describe a situation that took place just yesterday and explain why I don't believe in coincidences. So I had general orientation yesterday. That's when brand new employees join the agency and a part of the orientation process is I have to take them down to the security office so that they can secure security badges that give them access to particular areas. And so uh, this office is located on the completely other side of the complex that we're in. So I walked over there with these three young ladies and I would have normally been in that area for maybe about 15 minutes. So I walk them over, they're getting their uh, badges taken care of. And then I hear someone say from behind me, no, nah, I don't think that's him. And the person walks around and looks at me and says, no, nah, I don't think it's him. And then an older woman walks around and she says, that's definitely him. So me not knowing what's going on, I say, uh, no, nah, I'm not him. I'm not him. And uh, we laugh. But then she says, you, you're the minister from, and they quoted the church that I'd served at for over 20 plus years. And I said, yeah, that's me. Both of them were wearing masks because we were in a public place and, you know, COVID isn't completely done yet. So I looked at him really closely and I didn't recognize him. And then uh, the younger of the two women pulled her mask down and she went on to begin to say, yes, remember I said, yes, I do remember. And the older woman said to me, man, we could have used you. And I, I said, well, what, what's going on? And she then went on to explain a situation that she and her daughter were going through. Those were the two women that I was talking to. And as I listened to them, I realized that they were dealing with the situation that I myself had been dealing with for some years now. And as I listened to them, my heart went out to them because I could understand exactly what it is that they were going through. Well, I listened to them and then gave them some words of comfort and then said a word of prayer with them and gave them my contact information so that we could stay in contact. As I thought about what their situation was and what my situation is, I then asked myself, you know, why is it that sometimes we... We're doing the right thing, and yet we've got some stuff that still comes our way. Well, I've come to realize that there are things that are happening in the background, and that's why sometimes we go through the challenges that we go through. And so today, Trifling Ones family, we're going to take a look in the book of Job once again. And we're going to talk about the topic, You're Being Considered. Coming up next on The Trifling Ones. All right, fam, Job chapter one, verse eight, and it reads, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. So in this text, God is having a conversation with Satan and he asks Satan a question. He says, have you considered my servant Job? If you know anything about the book of Job, um, you know that Job goes through some traumatic stuff. I would recommend that you read uh, the entire book, but certainly read chapter one through, I'd say, three to get a pretty good idea of what, what he's going through. But the first point that we're going to take a look at is the consideration is based on our integrity. The consideration is based on our integrity. God asks the questions, have you considered my servant Job. Well, what's this, this consideration about? Job goes through some stuff, but his stuff comes about as a result of his integrity. The difficulties that Job went through weren't meant to be punishment for him. It wasn't because he had stepped out on Mrs. Job. So 
It's not recorded that he stepped out on his marriage. It wasn't because he played games and he lied to build his wealth. It wasn't because he stayed in the streets, but it was because he could be trusted in the trials. You know, I know some of us are saying, man, I don't know if I want to have that kind of integrity because I'm not trying to have a Job-like experience. Well, guess what? Job wasn't trying to have that kind of experience either. He, he didn't ask for this. God asked a question of Satan. He said, have you considered my servant Job? My guess is if God wasn't somewhat confident in Job's integrity, then he probably wouldn't have considered him for an assignment just like this. God says no one on earth is like him. So he's saying that Job is in a category all by himself. He says that he's blameless. Please understand that that doesn't mean perfect. It means that he's moral in the way that he lives his life and the things that he does. It says that he's upright and and that he fears God. Please understand, don't confuse that with he's fearful of God, but rather it means that he reverences God. He cares about the things that God cares about. It then says that he shuns evil, meaning he shuts that thing down like he's not going to play with evil. You bring nonsense to Job and he ain't with it. Bottom line is Job did what he could to live right. His integrity labeled him as one who could be tried by fire. My question to you is this. Is there anybody out there who's ever tried to live right? And then it feels like all hell literally has broken loose and it's broken loose to try to break you. Well, in many instances, you're being considered. Job was nowhere around. He was minding his business. Then a conversation takes place. My question for you is this. When conversations take place in rooms that we're not even in, What are people saying about us? When we're being considered for a business proposition, what are those who are considering us saying about us? We're about to date somebody's daughter or or son or marry somebody's daughter or son. What is that family saying about us? When there's a promotion coming up and there's discussion about who best to be promoted into that role, what are they saying about us? When someone pops up and drags our name through the mud, because somebody will, will your integrity cause other folks who are in the room to say, nah, that ain't how he or she gets down. That's not what they do. And shut that nonsense down. Will they do that because your integrity is just that solid? They don't even believe what people are bringing to them. Why might this be happening to you? Why might you be going through what you're going through? Well, it's possible that you're being considered. Yeah, sometimes we're getting a shellacking because of our own trifling behavior, but sometimes it's just the opposite. We're just simply being considered. But what are we being considered for? What does God have in mind? And that brings us to our second point, which is the conclusion is based on his intentions. So the consideration is based on our integrity, but the conclusion is based on his intentions. I don't know why. I don't know what you're being considered for. But I do know that the outcome, the conclusion is based on how he plans on using us. The conclusion is about his intentions. You know, I was standing in an area that I'm rarely in on yesterday. Again, I would have been in this location for maybe 15 minutes. And here I am. I'm recognized by these women that I hadn't seen in a few years. You can't tell me that this interaction is a coincidence because I've been dealing with the situation that's been ongoing since 2000. 16. I prayed about my situation. I've asked God to provide relief. I've cried at times. I've exhausted every resource that I could think of, every resource at my disposal. 
And in that moment on yesterday, as I listened to their plight, I realized that even if my situation doesn't end in a way that I would like it to, well, in that moment, my experience, my six-year journey allowed me to give comfort because I get it. It allowed me to show compassion because I get it. I understood their pain more than they could ever imagine. And so, like I said, we prayed together. And if for no other reason than that brief moment, my six years of challenge met with his intentions. Why are you dealing with this? I can't say for certain. But I can say that since it's happening, God certainly approves. And he expects a particular response from you. He has a particular intention in mind as it relates to you. Yeah, it's painful. And yeah, it's uncomfortable. But somebody someday is going to need you. And they're going to need your compassion. And they're going to need your love because of your experience. You're being considered. And the consideration is based on your integrity. And whether you agree with it or whether you like it or not, the conclusion is based on his intentions. Heavenly Father, we come before you now asking that you would be with us as we go through our trials and our tribulations. We recognize, Heavenly Father, that there's a reason behind everything that you do. We don't like what's happening. We wish it were something different. And yet, on this day, we understand that we're being considered for a task. And we don't know how or when, but we know that somehow, some way, someday, it's going to make sense. So, Lord, I'm asking this moment, that you would be with everyone in the trifling one's family so that we would be able to accept the difficulties that come and that we would rise to the occasion when you call us to make a difference through our experiences in the life of someone else. Forgive us, Lord, for doubting you. Forgive us, Lord, for questioning you. Forgive us, Lord, for at times being angry with you. It just hurts sometimes. We ask that you would restore us and redeem us, forgive us, and use us. All of this we ask in your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all of the trifling ones say, Amen. Thank you.